The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady Ada uses her power of engineering to help you find the things on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search of the Week this week? Okay, so this week, it's actually a lesson I learned about finding alternative parts for obsolete components, which is to always read the PCN. Um, even though you might think like, oh, you take the suggestion of what the um, alternative component is, uh, it's always good to read the PCN. Sometimes there's like little hints inside of it. Um, so this week, one of the um, parts that I had to find an alternative for is um, <coughs> this SPI FRAM chip. So let's go to the computer and I will shut off. Okay, so SPI FRAM is like I think one of the uh, underrated uh, chip technologies out there because we every week we have somebody who's like, you know, even like last week somebody's like, I really need a f you know to overclock my um, RP twenty forty or my you know seventy fifty one because I'm trying to stream data from an accelerometer to an SD card and I'm I'm running into it, I'm not able to stream the data I need to be faster and. Um, what they don't realize is that it's there's it's not frequency based. It's not how fast the processor is. What you're dealing with is um, you're writing data to, to uh, NOR flash, um, like uh, SPI flash, or um, on a micro SD card. And when you do that, you have to erase blocks and you have to write blocks, and that can take hundreds of milliseconds. Um, and so, you know, you can stream data to SD cards by like being really careful with like internal memory management and then you buffer the data and you write the data. Um, in fact, a lot of times when you look at uh, how digital cameras work, they'll have a big chunk of SRAM. When you take a photo, it has to stream the data to the SRAM and then it writes that data to the SD card. Because again, the SD card can take um, hundreds of milliseconds to erase and uh, write um, flash blocks. Now you can like pre-erase the blocks and there's like stuff you can do, but basically if you're trying to stream data to non-volatile storage, EEPROM and flash memory have this issue of like, you know, block erase, block writing taking a long time. Whereas uh, FRAM does not have this issue. FRAM is instantaneous. It basically has the speed of SRAM um, with the non-volatility of flash memory, but it's a little bit more expensive. So like this is you know, 256 kilobytes, um, but you know, it, it has the price cost of, you get multiple times what it would be if it was uh, nor flash. But that's the trade-off, right? You know, you, you wanna have uh, very fast data, use this. So, you know, I do recommend people, especially when they're doing like data logging in um, like model rockets or uh, UAVs, anywhere where there's a really high chance of damage. Like you you want to write the data and you want to store it, but there's also a chance that thing could explode and like you want to be able to recover the data or like power gets cut very quickly. Um, or for extreme low power usage, because again, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to have that power spike to erase blocks or write blocks. And um, unlike SRAM, you don't have to provide power constantly. You can cut the power after you've written the data. So uh, it definitely has a, a really cool uh, use case. But anyways, um, this chip that we use uh, is um, no longer available. It's obsolete. So, uh, you know, this is the, the part that we were purchasing, uh, 4 megabit SPI, 40 megahertz, and 8SOP. <sighs> Unavailable. You know, again, uh, this is chip shortage. A lot of things are going obsolete. Um, older lines are getting dropped. And so, you know, you go down to substitutes, and um, there is a substitute and it is in stock and I'm, I, you know, I may still use this part, um, but what's interesting is, well, first off, it's a little bit more expensive and I also have to get a couple samples and, and make sure that not only is it pin compatible, um, but also that uh, the commands used to like read and write data, like there is a standard called JEDEC for SPI data, but there's often extensions to it. Not every company uses the same extensions. You know, we've dealt with this in CircuitPython. Basically, you should always look at the data, you know, get the chip after looking at the data sheet. Um, but then I was like, you know what? You know, before I book this order, um, let's look at the uh, PCN, the uh, product change notification from Fujitsu. And you can see this was a last time buy. You know, we, we bought some at the end, but we're going to run out soon. 
So um, the chip that we're using is this one is, is affected. Um, and basically, you kind of have to read what's going on. And basically, it sounds like there's a company that was doing the packaging that they would actually take the dye and they would put it into an SOIC chip and then bond the wires. And like they're basically shutting down the SOP production. Um, and so they're going to change that product. So, you know, they're going to change from that specific packaging manufacturing to a different one. And what's interesting is that I've seen this before in other companies and they usually don't change the part number. Um, they just change the packager and they're like, hey, you know, whatever, sorry. Like you, it's like a little bit thinner, a little bit wider, like good deal. Um, but in this case, they actually did change the part number. So what was, uh, this one is now uh, this. Instead of J-N-E, it's uh, B-C-E. And uh, just for kicks, I was like, well, you know, like, is that available? And it turns out that it is available to order. Um, now, it's not immediately available. Uh, you know, it's going to basically be in stock in five months. So I'm going to probably, like, get samples of that Cypress chip. But what's interesting is this wasn't recommended as an alternative for... Uh, the chip that went obsolete. So just like be aware, like sometimes what's obsolete is the packaging, not the chip itself. The silicon itself is available, but it's under a different package, but you wouldn't know that unless you read the PCN. And I know these PCNs are a little bit dry sometimes, um, but I really do recommend going through them because sometimes they have uh, useful information. Like I, at first I was like, is this is only available in like USON or TDFN? No, it's actually still SOIC. It's just from a different packaging company. So um, given that, I feel pretty confident that this will be a drop-in replacement. What I can do is, you know, order, you know, 500 or 1,000 pieces of this. Uh, they'll show up in March, hopefully. And then meanwhile, I can also go back to that Cypress chip uh, that was recommended. Hold on. Which was, sorry. One second. This one. Try this because it's available in stock and I might like have it as an alternative. Um, just make sure that the firmware works with both. Use this, it's a little bit more expensive, but it'll like get me to March and then in March I can get that um, new old, you know, packaging style um, and swap back and forth. So. You know, it's a chip shortage. We're kind of coming out of it, but there's still like a little bit of rockiness uh, on the way out. So staying flexible with different uh, components, um, swapping back and forth is going to, uh, what basically gets you through the next six months, I think, of, of just dealing with um, minimal shortages. I mean, the lead time, five months is, is a lot, but look, it's not two years. You know, I'm not seeing 99-week um, lead times anymore. So... I'm going to pick up some of these and try this out. So this is my uh, great search pick. That's a great search.